Um, but I think the biggest brush with process was when I built an e-commerce store in Indonesia, um, because that's what you do when you're 25. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I do staying in a stable job um, scared me more than leaving. It took me a very long time to get my name out in the I mean, well, comparatively not long because I've just been here for 19 months. Well, I was going to say, you've only been here for 19 months, but yeah. not that very long. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of She's the Boss Female Entrepreneur Stories. I've been on a bit of a hiatus but I am back and joined by the amazing Simone Bell who is the founder and director of Success Coaching and Consulting. Hi Simone, thank you so much for joining me this morning. No worries, good morning Daniela. So before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button so you're the first to know when there's a new interview uploaded. Um, Throughout the rest of the year, there's going to be interviews with women from all different backgrounds, all different industries, all different sectors and ages. So make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss out. So Simone, please tell us how you came to be the founder and director of your company. Okay, so I started the company in 2017. Before that, I actually started my event management business, so that was... I'd gone to uni, so event management, um, but I was also coaching informally for many years, particularly um, teenage girls, young women, so around building their self-confidence, self-esteem, and you know, setting goals and achieving them. So it was sort of a natural progression then for me to to do it um, formally, to start a business, because I was doing the event management, and I said, okay, I can do that. So, so the coaching business actually set in my, planning my own workshops and events, and bring time in the coaching as well. So it was a natural progression to bring the two together. So you, you ran an event management business before. How did you, what gave you the impetus to say, actually, I'm not going to go and work for an event management company. I'm just going to do this myself. Well, I actually did. Um, so after, you know, I did work for a company, um, but I'd always, I'd always known that I was going to end up working for myself. I'd always had that, what you call entrepreneurial spirit um, and that was always a goal of mine to work for myself uh, to build my own dream and build my own business and so I worked for a company in order to gain my experience and you know learn some great uh, lessons and, and gain some great experience but the the natural uh, the goal of mine was always to have my own business and my husband had uh, been self-employed or is self-employed had been for over 20 years and he sort of gave me the push, gave me the encouragement, you know, was honest about the highs and the lows, um, but there's been a massive support. And so it was, it was a goal that I'm glad that I've now achieved. Mm -hmm. And what was the actual step? So did you just quit your job and then start a business or did you start the business whilst you were working? What was the exact uh, route that you took? So I started the business uh, in terms of building my network. So I stayed in my job and took time to build my network, um, went to lots of networking events, and then I've obviously been building my network and contacts um, through the company. And so I stayed in touch with them. And although it was a different area, but it was still um, in terms of I was working doing pharmaceutical events and then I moved into conferences and live music events. It was a different area, but in terms of contacts, suppliers, etc., just stayed in touch and built my network and then got married. Um, and my husband was actually away because he's a you know, went touring. So it was sort of, I, I quit my job. I said, actually, I'm going to go with my husband. And took some time out to build the business without the stress of actually working and had, the, had about four months uh, where I literally just went head down build this business, got to make it work. <laughs> and that's what I did. And that was the step and then started when I came to return to England. So we were in America for four months. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. One of the things that I um, shared on social media a couple of weeks ago was the importance of having, um, well, not the importance of, that the person you choose to marry or to have a life partnership with is pivotal to the success that you will have in your career or as an entrepreneur. And your example kind of um, really articulates that well. How how instrumental has your husband been in, I guess, keeping you on that journey or and getting you on that journey in the first place? Oh, it, yeah, he's been, it's been 
completely pivotal, massive. I will say that. I mean, you're who you marry, like you said there, that's your life partner. And so everything that you do in your life, they're going to either affect that or encourage and complement that. And so he's been a massive, um, you know, encouragement. He encouraged me to take the step. He's been with me through every step of the way. The, like I said, the highs, the lows, um, challenges. We recently had a baby um, in August, and so still have to work. You know, you know. So when you work for yourself, you, you have to work. You you don't work, you don't eat, right? I always say so. You know, sharing those responsibilities, and um, yeah, it's been a massive. Success. I I couldn't have done it. I'm sure I would have, but it's been a massive help having him there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, my husband is quite supportive of what I do. And I always think for those women who don't have a supportive partner or husband who are trying to go down an entrepreneurial route, it must be very difficult. Um, so, yeah, making those for those who are watching that haven't made the choice of a life partner or husband yet, but are entrepreneurial, um, be very clear on the partner or the husband that you choose or wife if you're a man watching because it can be the success of you or it could be detrimental to your entrepreneurial journey oh, definitely. So, oh, mm-hmm. no i was going to say and have those um make sure you talk about you know talk about your goals where you're going in life before you get married you know when you're dating etc make sure you know where you're going the last thing you want is you get to a certain point and you realize oh we're going in different directions here so yeah mm-hmm. sure so you said that you always had the goal of being your own boss and running your own business. Where did that stem from? I believe that was from my um, my parents and my family. A lot of entrepreneurs in my family, actually. And um, my, yeah, my dad owned his own business. Um, he he was employed and then started his own business. Um, electri- uh, he was an electrician, and and it was just the freedom and just yeah, it was seeing that example, but also just knowing that. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't necessarily know what it was going to be. I just always knew I, I was going to have my own business. And, you know, I enjoyed following, but I saw myself as a leader and wanting to inspire others. And I just believe that I could do that by being out on my own and actually, you know, being an inspiration to other people and knowing that the importance of building your own dream, because if you're not doing that, you're building someone else's. And that's been a massive, you know, I keep that in mind all the time. If, you're not, if I'm not building my own dream and building someone else's. And I just always had that. And I don't exactly know, like I said, I had those examples of my father and my family. But even when I was younger, that was just, I didn't know exactly where it was coming from. I couldn't fit all the bits together. I just knew it was always there. I'm going to run my own business, even when I didn't know what it looked like. And in terms of you saying you wanted to be a leader, did you, um, as a young person, were you that young girl that, and I, I hate to say it, because it is quite stereotypical, but that people would say, oh, she's bossy. She was telling yeah. people what to do. Were you that child? <laughs> I was that child. I, <laughs> yes, I was. School reports, uh, uh, teachers would say school. It wasn't bad. It was just learning how to, uh, how would you say, manage that. So I was the bossy one, like you said, the stereotype, but, you know, the leader and things like that. And as long as you know how to manage that and teachers and, and parents who cultivate that and in the right way see that seed and know how to to manage then it, it's a strength and i can see it as a strength then yeah somebody's got to leave <laughs> it's just, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, for real um did you feel that or no did you feel that were there people teachers adults that uh, really tried to nurture that or opposite did you have people that said actually no be quiet sit down just go and get a job like who were your kind of cheerleaders versus who were you detracted it was a bit of both um so my parents are massive cheerleaders um you know pushed me to and encourage that and nurtured that there were teachers that nurtured that also and um grew up um, in church and you know youth leaders that really nurtured that put me in positions of leadership but then on the flip side there were some teachers that were like you know sit down um I really tried to sort of curve that and saw it as a, a weakness instead of a strength. So it would be sort of, oh, you know, sit down, your boss, and give someone else a turn, which I get, you have to do that. Um, but it was almost like trying to silence that and, and quench that leadership in me and the, um, the drive that I had. Mm-hmm. But again, I've always had a strong personality that I really didn't let it bother me to a degree. I sort of, because I had enough people that were cheering me on. I guess, and so I was lucky in that, that and blessed in that I had a great support network. 
yeah, getting that balance is really important because particularly as a woman, um, as a woman of colour, sometimes there are people around you that will tell you that you cannot be and you will not be. So having those, especially parents, I think that's so important, parents that really say, yes, you can do it and ignore all of what everybody else has got to say. So that's wonderful. So moving back to the business, you made the decision to, to go into event management and then to, to start um, officially coaching and consulting. What did you fear, if anything, in as you kind of made that transition from event management to, well, from uh, actually, what did you fear going from working into starting an event management business? And then when you then took the next step to start success coaching and consultancy, what were some of the fears that you had? I guess so moving from my job, um, the fear was, okay, am I going to make this work really? Am I going <laughs> to... You know, I had to, but it was sort of like, okay, is this going to work? Money, you've got that security. Nine to five, it's a security blanket. You know, you've got a paycheck every month. You know what's coming in. And it was moving away from that security. And it was, there was a slight fear that, like, you know, what if it doesn't work? Um, you know, all those sort of things came into my mind. But I just kept saying, well, okay, if it doesn't work, I can go and get another job if I really have to. <laughs> um you know, I've got qualifications and all of that. So that was the fear. But the fear from going from the event management to the coaching for me was, okay, will people believe in me? Will I get clients? Because I'm known as the event manager. You know when you can sort of put your, your, yourself in a box? Oh, and other people put you in a box. Okay, you're the event manager. That's what you do. This is something completely new to other people. So the fear was, okay, are people going to buy into me? Uh, you know, am I going to, are people going to trust me to coach them? And then I literally had to say to myself, well, you believe in you, you know what you can do. And there's something about self-belief that makes people believe in you. When you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you because you give that off. If you give, you know, if you give off that sort of, um, you know, your doubting, your fear, anxiety, people pick up on that. And so people buy you, and I always say that people buy you before they buy your business. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and in terms of um marketing your business and promoting yourself and i guess communicating that message that you do know what you do because i think obviously i do coaching and consulting as well and interestingly i've had a similar journey my biz first business was an event management business also so we've had a, a bit of a similar journey actually but um for me one of the things when i started was this idea of how do i ensure and you kind of said it that, that was part of your doubt but how do I ensure that the people that I'm speaking to recognize and appreciate the value that I can provide for them and how do I communicate that without get, getting lost in the the kind of bubble not bubble like the, the crowd because there's a lot of there's a lot of coaches there's a lot of consultants there's a lot of people saying I can help your business turn over six figures I can help you do this how did you kind of plan and how are you currently trying to speak over that kind of noise? Yeah, yeah I was going to say the noise, uh, especially, you know, social media. So if you like, you, you hit the nail there, there are a lot of coaches. It started with networking. It really did and um, building upon contacts, letting people know what I was doing, um, letting that be the, the first thing. I said, well, you know, meeting people. Oh, what do you do? Before it would be like, oh, event management, but I also do a bit of coaching. It, it's okay. It was like a sideline. And I literally had to stop doing that. I'm a coach. In fact, I don't even mention the event management business to be honest, that's what comes in later conversations. Um, so it's still running, still got the business, but I really had to introduce myself as I'm a coach. This is what I do, um, build my networks of speaking to people, um, social media, you know, all my social network platforms, that's what I'm doing. I'm really, um, yeah, changing the focus and changing my own focus into do, and letting people know that the focus of what I'm doing and, getting into the right spheres and the right events as well in terms of networking events and yeah um i do a lot with young people like i said so a lot of school work as well so just, um, going out and doing workshops in schools and that builds your network as well so. mm -hmm. networking i don't like the traditional networking and i know a lot of people that don't do you enjoy networking or have you found a strategy of networking without going down that kind of Hello, my name is so and so, and I don't care what you've got to say, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Does anyone really like networking or do we just Some do it? Some people do. Some people, I've met people that say, oh, I love going to a networking event. I personally oh. hate it, but I have met people that do. I've met a lot of people that don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think, well, the one thing I love networking is what we do because you, you sort of have to. And I always see networking as building relationships. So it's not about going to an event and saying, oh, I'm going to network and I'm going to get... Um, loads of business out of it. I, I see networking building relationships and I think if you change the focus in terms of building relationships, that's what we do in general life. You go out, you meet people, you introduce yourself to people. Um I don't go out straight away and be like, oh you know, and I've got this and I'd love to work with you here. It's like, okay, building a relationship because people are going to remember you like I, like I said before, people buy you first. So if they were if you build a relationship, they remember you. It's not always about who's in the room, it's about who they know as well. So I see networking as building relationships, I guess I'm, is what I'm trying to say. I, the, you know, the traditional way of just going in the room and, oh, hi, and like you said, I don't care about what anyone else is saying. Well, no, actually, I will do care about, and if I can refer other people um, for their business, if you can help someone, it's a two-way street as well, so you help people, they, they will remember you as well. What has been the hardest thing about um, running your own business? Hardest thing about running the business, it's twofold. So we have said marketing before, so we spoke about that and um, cutting through the noise. I definitely would have said that. Um, that has been a major challenge because, like you said, everybody's doing something. And we're in the time, you know, the era of entrepreneurship and, you know, social media and everybody's everything. And anybody could be anything on social media. So cutting through that noise has been a challenge. Um, and also, I guess... Now having a baby, I had a baby in August, getting back into work because your whole mindset can change when you have a child and, you know, she's now my focus, but because she's my focus, I have to make the business work as well. So it's remembering that. And so just keeping in mind what I'm doing. So the challenge is balancing, balancing motherhood and business. Yeah. It's um, personal question. Yeah. I have a three and a half year old. And there's a lot of pressure on me at the moment. When are you having another one? When are you have another one? Because you don't want the gap to be too big. Everyone's always going on and on. And for me, I'm in a really good space in terms of career and business and that kind of thing. And I, I therefore, the idea of having a baby and all that that brings is not really at the top of my priority list. Mm -hmm. When you chose to have your... Well, I, I'm making a huge assumption that you chose, but... Yeah, yeah. I'm not going into that much detail. <laughs> <laughs> when you realised that you were having a baby and you've not known because your, your business, you started your business in 2017, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so your business wasn't that um, far in. Yeah. Were you scared about how that was going to impact the growth of your business? And now since having your um, daughter, were those fears unfounded or has it just given you, um, has it just made you have to find strategies around it? Very long yeah, yeah. question. No, no, I understand. It. That's why I um yeah, I was scared. I chose because it's so difficult. I said, no, not difficult. I'm not use that word. As women, we business and everything. Yeah, we want to be business owners and all of that stuff. But we, you know, some of us want to be mothers and we want that. And I saw my age and everything like that. And I and we've been married two two years then, and so I wanted a child to. But I was definitely. Fearful, and um, you know, I can't lie and say I was. Oh, it was great. I was like, is this, you know, how's this going to impact? How's this going to work? And there was an impact because inevitably there was, a, you know, having a baby is a huge, massive life change. But like I said, that I have to find, and I'm finding strategies around that. Mm -hmm. um, is life doesn't stop because and your business doesn't stop unless you unless you want it to, um, which I don't. So it's finding strategies. How's this going to work? And you know. My husband's massive support family, um, you know, timing and working around timing. You know, when she naps, I have to work and sleep. Still get sleep, because I will say that, you know, sleep is important. No point trying to run on empty because you're burned out. But, yeah, so it's just finding strategies and making it work. And like, like I said, she, she's a massive part of my why. And when you understand what your why is and you have your why and why you're doing what you're doing, you make it work. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't, I won't tell my husband that. <laughs> I'm not ready to make it work just yet. <laughs> <laughs> you do what's right for you. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's interesting because everyone has different opinions. And for me, I find that the kind of overall um, theme tends to be 
you can have a baby and you can have a business. You can do both and you can be an amazing mom and you can be an amazing business person and it's all going to be amazing. And nobody ever talks about that fear of actually, I'm going to try, but there is definitely going to be an impact. And I think that there's this really strong um, narrative at the moment on social media mm. about um, women in business being that everything and being a mother is easy to do with a baby and I exactly. actually you can do it and I'm not saying that you can't and I did it and obviously you you've done it and thousands of women before us have done it but I think that there's not enough discussion about fears and the impact and I think oh, it's important that those things are highlighted yeah no I agree with you um completely because if <laughs> Social, I always say that I love social media, but also you have to be aware that, like I said before, anybody could be anything on social media. And I think sometimes when we present like, you know, we're superwoman and, you know, it's just everything great. I think we do a disservice to other people because we should be honest mm -hmm. and there are fears and there are challenges and there are down days. You know, I get super tired. There are tears sometimes because you're just exhausted, mm -hmm. but you pick yourself back up. You remind yourself, you know, I like of my faith in God. I pray. I have a support, like massive support network, and I I get on with it. But you know, I am not going to sit here and pretend like every day is rosy because I don't think that's fair to other people that I consider it. <laughs> it's a challenge, but you will get through the challenges. Yes, no, for sure. You mentioned that you have faith in God. How um, how important has prayer been? in achieving the success that you've achieved thus far? Oh, it's been massively important, um, prayer and faith. Because you don't always see the next step. You you have your, your plans and your, your goals and everything, but sometimes you can't see how that's going to work. Um, but it's been my prayer life, my trust in God that says, you know, even though I can't see, I know that God sees and I know that um, my end is going to be great. As you know, keep walking and trusting and believing. So it's been massively important. And I think, like I said there about the down days, maybe I wouldn't have got through as well as I could if I didn't have that, you know, faith and prayer and, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I, prayer is very important for me as well. And I feel that as, a, as somebody in business, because there's so many peaks and troughs, that if you don't have something grounding you, and if you're not believing in kind of this idea that it will come good in the end, um, how do you keep on pushing and moving forward? Um, so I'm, I'm always interested to, to speak to other people that have um, faith, irrespective of what their kind of religious beliefs are. But the idea of believing in something to kind of propel you forward, I think is really quite important. In terms of um, the work that you do, how did you find, well, you said you did networking, but the process of getting your first client, particularly with the event management company, because that would have been the first time you'd done it. Yeah. How did you go about getting new clients? Because people always ask me when they start in business, how do I how do I find someone to pay me to do something? So how did yeah. you find yeah. someone to pay you? Um, so built on contacts and just kept putting myself out there. Um, you know, I I saw I use social media a lot actually because where I saw events or things happening, I would just reach out to people and just be like, okay, um, you know, if you ever need help, you know, please, um, I'm doing this, you know, I've got this business, um, please get in touch. And you have to keep on consistency is key. You keep on, you keep on knocking on doors and letting people know what you're doing. And eventually, you know, somebody will, as I said, bite. <laughs> um, and I built, got my first bite just through that, you know, reach out and saying, this is what we do. And then people start referring to you. So I got a massive client, um, you know, not long ago actually, and it was through somebody referring to me and saying, you know, this person they're looking for this an event manager, and um, you'd be great for it and get in touch with them. And it was the same with the coaching, um, same thing really, letting people know what to do, speaking to people, um, when I was networking, but not just specific network events. You know, um, wherever I found myself, and letting people know what I was doing and and just selling myself but not in a salesy way just let people know this is what i do if you ever need any help then please do that and the public speaking as well um getting on stages and speaking that's massive as well um because then people inquire about you oh, okay who's that and, and things like that so that that's also been a really good source yeah that's that's a strategy that i always recommend to my clients if you can get yourself on a stage 
Um, for me, it worked because I hate, as I said, I hated that one-to-one -one, one -one networking. So what I would then do is try to get on the stage to speak. Yeah. And therefore, as you said, once you get off the stage and everybody comes to you, then you don't have to go to everyone. Um, and it starts that dialogue. So, but not everybody's comfortable with standing yeah. on the stage. So were, was that something that you had to learn or do you, were you always just, I can speak and I'm going to get up on a stage and speak? I, I was actually, it was, I, I was, was confident. So I would get up on the stage, but I realized that not everybody is. And so I do workshops around that as well, even with the young people as well, um, women and young people around public speaking and presenting. Uh, because I realized building your confidence because I realized that not everyone has that confidence. However, I believe that it can be taught and it can be learned um, just to build your confidence. To stand. Because you've got to, if you don't like one-to-one, -one, like I said, you've got to do one-to-many. And actually, that's a, probably a better strategy, one-to-many, because you're reaching more people. And, you're, and I find it much easier because with your one-to-one, you, you feel that extra pressure, um, I would say. I actually find it easier, you know, to get up on the stage and, you know, you don't... I can say this all the time, yeah. yeah. Um, put me on the stage in front of a thousand people. I'll do that ten times before I'll go into a networking event and have to speak to ten individual people. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does, because actually on the stage, I don't really see anyone. Exactly. I'm just talking. If somebody's not interested, it's not that big of a deal. Whereas when you're in a face-to-face, -face, if someone's not interested, it's fairly obvious that they're not interested. Exactly. And that's a very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Where did you get that confidence from? Confidence came from, actually, I always say this, church. Actually, growing up in church, you know, Sunday school, going before people, um, you know, reciting your, your Sunday school, this in front of church, and it just... From there, it just builds, and um, I'd always grab the opportunities like Center School, very leader, very loud. Um, so, use those opportunities um, to do that. And it, but I always say it started from church, and that, that's why I always say, you know, you, it's not just about spirituality, if that makes sense, but you learn actually, you know, key life skills actually through yeah. church, and that was one of them presenting and, and public speaking, and it just grew from there. Mm -hmm. What has been your greatest achievement? Since starting your two, the, your first business and now with your coaching business, my greatest achievement. I always say it's it's impacting lives. I've really seen the, through the coaching how I've impacted people, and you know, getting those messages. So you know, you've, you've really helped me. One lady in particular, her confidence was so low. I um, mean, yeah, self esteem so low, broken because of you know experiences and situations. And, and now she's sawing, she's um, gone through a promotion um, and, she, and is on the way to starting her own business herself and coach her through that. And that for me is the accomplishment, is impacting lives. And that's what I want to do, you know, impact a thousand lives. That's what I want to do, that's the aim, you know. Mm -hmm. I just want to see people, you know, really reach their potential because it's possible. And with a push and having people supporting you and cheerleading you and cheering you on, you can do it. So that's my greatest achievement is impacting, seeing the impact and getting those messages saying that I've, I've helped somebody. What is the greatest lesson you've learned about yourself? Greatest lesson I've learned about myself. Um, <clears throat> greatest lesson I've learned about myself, I would say, is that well, that's actually been a lot quite hard. I think that I am persistent. Mm -hmm. I am a persistent person. I think that's the great. I think I I kind of knew, um, but I always I keep coming back to my daughter because I've had to push and to to really, you know, have that grit about me. And I think if I ever doubt if I have that, I I know now that I am persistent and that I will keep on going. And I think that. Life, life happens, so there are still going to be challenges as I walk, carry on through my life. But, but I need to keep pulling from that. I got, I got through that. I got through the challenge of, you know, having my child, you know, having a business, and you know, money dips and life dips and all of that. But I got through it, and I'm, I'm getting through it. So I'm pulling on that and holding on to that. So the, my grace, I've learned about myself is that I'm a persistent person. Mm -hmm. And persistence is a. a a, a, a trait that you need yeah. if you're trying to, to be in business because you are going to get knockbacks. There are going to be dark times. Yeah. Sometimes they can last. They can, it can be a season. 
And if you're not persistent and you can't, and you're not resilient and you can't bounce back, then you're not going to be able to move forward. Yeah. In terms of personal development, what kind of books do you read? What would you say is the the most um, influential either book, film, talk, uh, blog that you've read that's really impacted you in business and on your entrepreneurial journey? Wow, I've read so many books. Um, so. What a great one that I've read, actually. Uh, Key Personal Influence. Um, one of my faves, Daniel oh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I always recommend that to everyone. <laughs> yeah, that was that that was an eye opener. Massive love that book. Um, just think as well. There's just been so many because I take bits from everyone, so I think that's the key. The key one, Key Personal Influence, has been a massive one. Yeah, and the Prosperous Coach. Um, is one of uh, that as well. Um, oh, I'll check that out. I haven't read that. Yeah, one. yeah, that's just good. That's good. I'll write that down for I don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, three pieces. Well, no, let me not jump to that question yeah. before I ask that question. What is the plan? What are the goals that you've committed to achieving over the next kind of three to five years? Where do you see yourself um, in the future? Where do you see the business? Okay, so uh, the business, I really want to take it internationally because I have this goal um, where I just want to impact, uh, massive impact for a thousand women and a thousand teenagers. And, but I don't just see that in the UK. Um, so I really want to take it internationally. So I've seen myself and getting on some stages internationally um, and just bringing massive impact worldwide because I just know it's so much bigger than me. So that's, that's the plan that's on putting in place to go international. Uh, with the business of the coaching business um yeah so that's that's the, the goal wonderful three pieces of advice you'd give to a woman um who is sitting at home and thinking actually i wouldn't mind starting my own business but i don't know if it's for me okay three pieces of know your why um i keep i kept that's i guess it's been the theme of my interview but know your why are you doing it um because when you've got an attachment, an emotional attachment, especially to your why, you'll keep going through the dark days. So know your why, mm -hmm. uh, know your industry, know you know the industry. What are the, the challenges? What are the uh, the fees built around your industry? Just know that inside out, and it will be a continual learning process. But stay up to date uh, with the industry, and yeah, keep going. Honestly, keep going. Challenging, like I say, life happens. Um, there will be challenges, there will be dark days, there will be resistance, um, but keep going, keep going, despite people's opinions, people, you don't need anyone's approval um, to do what's in your heart to do, I always say that, and your, your only limit is you, when you remove everything else, we put limitations on ourselves, so keep going, break through all of those limitations, and you can do it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. If anybody wants to find out about your business and your services, where can they go to do that? Uh, well, my website will be at so, so, uh, www.snowsl.com, um, they follow me on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and LinkedIn, so on all social media platforms. Awesome. Thank you and wishing you every success in your future endeavours and on your interna internationalisation. Um, I hope everything works out for you and thank you guys for watching. If there's anything in this video that's really resonated with you, please uh, leave a comment below. Um, if you're interested in being interviewed for She's the Boss, please get in touch. Email me at daniella at she's the boss, intl.com. And please make sure you click like if you've enjoyed this video and share with anyone that you think may get value in this. And remember, think big, take action and keep watching. Thanks for watching.